Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome you all to the LinkedIn Live show. Um, I know it's pretty early. Um, John, um, his timing is at 5.30 early morning, and uh, um, here in Central Time, it's 8 o'clock, and I'm pretty sure some of you might be at work, some of you might be getting ready to go to work. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, Share us um, your comments, likes, um, support. That way we will know um, that you guys are um, watching the show and that guys, we will know that the live streaming is working properly as well. So uh, without further ado, let me share a little bit more about you know how I met John. So, um, uh, I went to the Talent Brand Summit, and thanks to Brian Cheney and, and Will Staney for inviting me to the Talent Brand Summit. It was such a great uh, experience for me to connect with all the employer branding, um, you know, uh, professionals out there. And I had an amazing opportunity to talk with this wonderful person, um, John Graham. And uh, <laughs> So um, we will we will get to know a little bit more about him and his background, which is really unique and interesting. And I don't I don't want to steal that thunder, definitely. Uh, but to me, when I approached John, he was such a you know um, um, down to earth and and full of wisdom, and on top of it, real such a real human being, where he brings in authenticity to what he does and in his all all of his interactions. So John, thank you so much for, for being there um, wow. and um, being who you are. No, thank you. Thank you. So first of all, thank you for having me, Nisha. Um, what an intro. I hope I live up to it for the audience. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, we, uh, we, we made an awesome connection in, uh, in Austin this year, thanks to to the good folks over at uh, Talent Brand Alliance and Talent Brand Summit. So Will Cheney. Uh, Will Staney and Brian Chaney, uh, you know, shouts out to them. Awesome. And uh, um, I learned a lot about employee advocacy from you. And then I started researching more about you. And then I uh, got to know your work behind, you know, the employer branding and recruitment marketing efforts at Amgen. And yeah. then recently you guys launched in my code campaign. So, um, yeah. you know, I have a lot of things, a lot of bullet points that I need to cover. But before I do that, if there is anyone out there uh, who doesn't know of who you are um, and your background, I would really appreciate if you can um, give us a glimpse. Sure thing. So uh, without going too far down the rabbit hole, I'll simply say that um, I discovered my inherent design and what I was supposed to be doing uh, through the art of uh, music. Um, as a former recording artist, uh, that opted to stay independent. Uh, I had to figure out social and how to connect my my music to uh, to audiences who would listen. And so that meant social media. Um, figured out Twitter pretty early on in its uh, in its founding. And um, and as a, as a result, I did about five albums in two years, uh, which then gave me some perspective on um, on the landscape around me. And I realized that a lot of artists had no idea how to do social. So started my own company doing um, social strategy and brand development for entertainers, which then grew to small to medium sized businesses, which then, right, by, by this is by night, by day I'm a business performance analyst crunching numbers for uh, brands like uh, Mars and Citizens Bank and QVC. And uh, and so it was, uh, it was at a point where I got a call from Merck, uh, one of the largest pharma companies in the world, mm -hmm. to come in and start a new role for um, recruitment marketing and employer brand development. And uh, that was like the first merge of passion and profession for me. So uh, threw myself all in, um, love the space, love the development of the space. And that's, that's led me uh, to where I am today in sunny LA uh, at Amgen. Uh, the largest biotech company in the world. And so, you know, for me, it's uh, it's been an amazing journey. It's definitely nonlinear, uh, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of lessons along the way. But yeah, uh, 
This is such a unique background that uh, a person who has been, you know, um, been in the entertainment industry, who knows how to get the attention of, of, of your audience, right? Because it's all about your audience, be it music or presentation or the way you talk or the way you present yourself, right? Yeah. So you took that learning to an organization, meaning corporate America, in order to, hey, it's all about your audience. It's all about attracting talent. So here on the other side of the you know, uh, spectrum, talent acquisition professionals like us and human resources professionals, uh, out there, not knowing, okay, what it takes to attract that talent or what it yeah. takes to, you know, make that connection where you come in and then help share that thoughtful insight. So thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. Help us understand how was that transition time for you in order to move from entertainment industry to healthcare and biotech? Mm. Well, that's how really easy good. it was for you? Uh, it, well, I'll say, I'll say it's, um, when you move from a space that's either largely unregulated to a space that's extremely regulated, in mm -hmm. fact, some of the most regulations in the world, um, there is an adjustment period, right? And so I knew, I know social and the landscape and how to connect authentically. That's a space that's not very comfortable for a lot of companies, right? Um, it's, it's a, it's a relatively new approach to connecting with audience. It's no longer just the one-way dialogue. It's, or excuse me, the one-way monologue. It's a two-way dialogue and being mm -hmm. social mm -hmm. requires some vulnerability, some honesty, transparency, right? Authenticity. And so moving into that space, I really had to learn, um, learn the landscape and understand, uh, you know, not and, and have a healthy respect for the conservative culture that that historically has governed uh, this 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 industry, and once you figure out sort of you know where your fences are, you're like, okay, I can get I can push this envelope this far, or, mm -hmm. you know, or, or or oops, I hit a wall, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you do hit some walls. Um, then you start to get an understanding of okay, what what should I focus on? What can I focus on that um, you know that is within guardrails that everybody's comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And then, you, you know, once you execute that successfully for a bit, you can start to experiment and do some things that are uh, a bit more outside of the comfort zone and status quo. And, and uh, you know, you build, you build brand equity with that, right? And, and, and trust and credibility. Uh, Thank you for sharing that. So, so it's, I'd say it's, it's fun to work within that kind of construct because it, it forces your creativity Mm -hmm. to be extremely accessible right mm -hmm. um if we could you know if i could be like wendy's brand on twitter like that would be amazing however mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> when, wendy's is i think the far end of the spectrum for where i am in the regulated industry so, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's it's a bit of an extra sweet um if i were to tell you that working in a um regulated industry and making it happen right because you work through all the challenges and yet you are still competitive just like any other employers out there who can easily do it so thank you for yeah. for for uh, that accomplishment so tell us um a little bit more about you know the the activation of that global employer brand at amgen right from you know where you start and now where you are at right now um what it took you you know order, in order to get you where you are at right now well uh so we are in the process of building um a brand new evp so employee value proposition we've just mm -hmm. uh, we just revealed that uh, to our leadership team. So making great progress mm -hmm. on track to deliver the employer brand, um, you know, uh, very soon. So, um, you know, it, it starts with, I think being first a new employee, your job is to understand the culture you just joined. True. <clears throat> um, so you need to get to know the people, the history, the, the, the culture from building to building, let alone site to site or country to country. Mm -hmm. um, and as an employer brander, I mean, my job is a recruitment marketer. My job is to understand the culture as um, as intimately as possible, so that I can then reflect that externally, mm -hmm. right? Through through the through the content, through the um, through the through the strategy, and so forth. So, 
Um, you know, you spend a lot of time having conversations with people at various levels, various um, functions, and then you start to get a common thread. And so for me, um, I'm fortunate to have an amazing uh, agency partner, uh, you know, agency partners, I should say, over at uh, Shaker. So shout out uh, to my people over at Shaker. Um, they, um, you know, we work together to, to, to sort of bring data and, um, you know, cultural insights together to, to, to develop this articulation that is a value proposition or employee value proposition. And, you know, going through that, I mean, it's everything from data collection, from internal surveys, external landscape surveys, um, you know, uh, focus groups and interviews, executive level interviews and so forth. And, you know, glass door data. True. You, you bring all of this together and then it, 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 it collates into uh, or coalesces into uh, this narrative, and it's amazing to watch when you speak to people in different parts of the world mm -hmm. saying the same thing unprompted. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you've gotten to the heart of your cultural expression. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a fun process. It's really, uh, really. It is. Yeah, um, it is. And and thank you for sharing that. You know, the the talking about what it is like to hear right from your you know employees or what what we normally say right from the horse mouth right to yeah. know how that experience looks like when it comes to working with an organization and you cannot replace that with any other content because um, they are the people who live and breathe your dna or your organization's dna if you will so um Thank you for sharing that. But can you give a little bit more about the behind the scenes of how do you normally bring that employee stories to life? Do you reach out to them by looking at, you know, uh, departments or looking at certain backgrounds or how does that mm. work goes in order to capture that authenticity? To yeah. And how real is that realness? <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that's a really good question. Um, I'll start with, we, we seek out the stories. However, we do so within a, um, you know, uh, looking first at what the business need is. And so we work very closely with talent acquisition leads who, um, who will work in concert with functional leaders. And so they know where the hiring challenges are, right? What are the very tough to fill jobs? Mm -hmm. um, is there going to be a ramp up in certain locations or certain sites around the world? And then we can align and start working backwards from that, right? So establishing what the business need is first. Sure. And then, you know, and then we can start to work on profiles of, you know, the people who are in already in these roles um, that are very tough to fill, right? Very thin talent pools. There's a handful of people in the world who may do what, you know, what, what's needed or this critical work. Mm -hmm. um, and then we then we start working backwards backwards from what is their story, right? How did what was their journey? How did they get to where they are, and who are they? Right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so we try and balance very much the the personal and the professional because at the end of the day, you know, if we were to just come out and sell the company and how great the company is and only talking about the company, yeah. people see right through that, right? And and yeah. and you you don't want to position your 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 employees or your staff members to to be just you know company parrots right mm -hmm. you want them to to authentically express their love of the work they do uh what what drives them where, where that burning passion to come in every day and do what they do and mm -hmm. how does that bleed into their personal life and vice versa mm -hmm. i think if we capture all of those elements in a unique way and then we determine okay well what's the best format is it video is it editorial um is it live stream right and so we think about how can we best articulate or express that person's value proposition and who they are to make the best connection with, um, you know, with the intended audience? Awesome, and it it is it is um, inspiring for the employees too to actually bring their whole self to work, right? So it's not it's not just about your day to day job. It's not right. just about the desk that you work from eight to five. It's about who you are as a person. And can you live <clears throat> and breathe and do what you do and be who you are, yeah. um, and continue doing who you are, right, or what you do? Um, exactly so thank right. you, thank yeah. you for um, you know giving the atmosphere to to your employees 
to be their best at um, you know being uh, themselves. Yeah. So that takes me to the segue, which is actually okay. a great segue to my next question, which I noticed is the um, diversity recruitment marketing campaign in segue. my code. So. Yeah. I watched all the videos <laughs> and I must tell you, this is such an inspiring story oh, because I've seen that organization where they get wrong is they go fancy. They, they try to bring in, to make it all about fun, make it all about the, you know, work environments and make it all about that happiness and togetherness and all. Well, yeah. it is true. I mean, it will be there, but at the same time, how, dirty you can get to to showcase a job the the effort that goes into do goes into doing a job right. um, the challenges and the insights and the you know the behind the scenes so you captured that very well in Thank all you. the videos so share with our audience share with our employer branding professionals out there in terms of that behind the scenes uh, how did you come up with the terminology in my code itself yeah. and uh, um, take us yeah. through all that journey. Wow, um, so it, in my code is, uh, so, so I love the concept of, um, of you know, bringing your whole self to work, right? And DNI uh, is a very um, important part of the work that we do. It's, I have a personal passion for it mm -hmm. um, and, and ensuring that you know, everybody can can feel confident and comfortable in expressing who they are True. Um, in the way that they uh, feel most confident doing so. So uh, in my code came as a result of working directly with our chief information officer uh, and his team to, to actively change the landscape of his organization. And, and the reality is, um, you know, in the tech industry, IT fields, IS information systems fields, and and tech as a whole, um, there's a su significant underrepresentation of uh, of you know of not only African Americans but Latinx women, um, you know, LGBT as well. Thank you. So, so understanding that and and knowing that this is the great the broader landscape of the industry, you know what could we do at Amgen to do our part to make sure that, that that representation shines through, right? And bring that diverse perspective, diverse experience and background um, to, uh, to, to the information system side of biotech. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, brainstorming sessions and talking about sort of a higher level concept of, you know, walking, walking through the lives of um, several individuals within the, um, the organization. Um, I, I wish I could say that there was like this strategic approach to coming up with the name in my code, but it just sort of flew out of my face as we were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, just connecting sort of the dots, right? Coding as as a, you know as a as a as a function versus in my code and DNA mm -hmm. DNA code. So it just sort of worked together, but but then. Um, the there's a little bit of serendipity involved as well and so uh when i first got to to uh to la i was like okay i'm i'm near hollywood and i and it's it's really hard to find a production company that does documentary style video work um that focuses specifically on employer brand mm -hmm. and as I, as i was telling one of my uh, one of my team members this uh, and I was just like, this is baffling to me. How is this not happening? The next day I get an in-mail from a company, from a production studio that does documentary style film spe specializing in employer brand. Wow. Random. Or not. The universe heard. Uh, so, so, so that was a, an awesome partnership that came right on time and, and we were able to connect. And, and so, uh, you know, King, Tolu uh, King Toledo uh, production studios out of LA is, uh, brought their creative vision mm -hmm. uh, to to my creative vision or my team's creative vision mm -hmm. and took it to another level, right? So, mm -hmm. and that's what you hope for with partnerships where it's not just, here's what I want, go do that. It's here's what I'm thinking, yeah. expand on it with your expertise and really bring it to life, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, you know, we had three amazing people uh, that we featured in In My Code who, who have Yes. Very robust stories 
Um, it's very hard not to feel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after watching this video, uh, a deeper connection to it and wanting to engage more with them. So, um, so yeah, that's how it came about. Okay. Um, this, yeah. you know, once we launched, it was a full on blitz, social campaigns, targeted campaigns. We did a red carpet screening on, uh, at the I saw that too. Yeah. I saw that yeah too. It was, we turned it into a, a very big, um, experience because we wanted people to not only see these stories in, mm -hmm. in, in a way that what they could connect with, you know, uh, you know, authentically and genuinely, but also, um, to, to, to showcase how big of a deal this is, right? Like mm -hmm. this is the first time it's ever been done, um, you know, True. at Amgen. Um, I, I really like that, um, you know, you guys brought in all the employees together to showcase this campaign. And yeah. I've seen that most of the, I mean, some of the employers out there, they do a great job of coming up with the campaign and spending all the money a friend and then bringing agency and then making it happen. But at the same yeah. time, in order to share that internally, who 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 is your cheerleader, right? The yeah. employer employees are your brand ambassadors, and having them to reshare your content and invite yeah. their you know friends and network to see yeah. how awesome workplace you have. Um, so some of the you know employers out there are I guess are missing that aspect where yeah. you know we can utilize um, Amgen's example of you know bringing the party. And, and bring your employees and showcase the great work and effort that you guys yeah. did. And, and let me let me also suggest that it, it all starts with the advocacy from the top, right? Mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. you have a when you have a leader who is uh, extremely passionate and dedicated to mm -hmm. making a significant and meaningful change, mm -hmm. that changes everything. And then to your point about you know it's it's one thing to create the content and then just sort of push it out on social. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, the best way to experience something is together. True. Which is why concerts happen, right? People yeah. can come around together and that there's an energy exchange and a common yeah. thread that's that's weaved as people are in proximity experiencing something together. So, you know, it's about finding ways to bring people together. And I guess I pull that from from the music days and you know, I, I can it. see that. I can yeah. see you kind of you know, utilize that background to, to you know, launch this party at your employer, right? Bringing yeah. in the entertainment industry and not, and, and, and <laughs> you did, you did. And <laughs> then, you know, I bring the correct, you know, vendor that helps you to create it as an, to create it as a documentary yeah. instead of being an entertainment or instead of being a fancy, because that, that goes into the organization's DNA. And you brought the party into the organization by bringing employees as well. So I guess I see the connection. I mean, everybody yeah. can see that connection. So yeah. many employers out there who are looking to partner up with vendors, yeah. agencies, uh, what's your um, advice to, to those folks? Yeah, so agent, so I would say what you should look for in your agency partners, not just their, um, uh, you know, their capability to do the work, right? I think that's pretty standard. Um, mm -hmm. It's really about that aspect of partnership. Do you feel like um, they are they are not only uh, you know. Uh, executing tasks on your behalf, but are they adding value and yeah, giving you perspective on the marketplace or the landscape or the tools and tech and, and all of these things and giving you ideas of, you know, uh, things that you may not have thought about or may not know about that can enhance what you're trying to do. Sure. And, and being conscious that, um, you know, I would say you should never feel like your agency or your partner is trying to sell you on something, right, or, or 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 drive more more spend on something just because it benefits mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know there's there's agencies that cost a, a wide range of you know uh, of, of prices on everything, but but at the end of the day, you should feel just like um, like you're getting the value for your spend and beyond, you know. So it's it's really about the relationship. I think the the capabilities are pretty you know, uh, ubiquitous, it's, uh, but you really have to have a real, you know, a really good thought partner mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Thought partnership. Yeah. So um, 
I guess it's been a couple of months since we launched um, in my code, yeah. right? So what's the you know what's the response that you are getting um, you know from from a talent acquisition point of view? I know we are targeting diversity. We're wanting to target diverse talent pool coming in who can be a right fit to the organization, not just the quantity but the quality as well. Mm -hmm. So um, if you if you can share a little bit about you know the the results that you have achieved so far. Yeah, so we've, um, I gotta say the, the launch strategy for this wasn't, uh, it, it was more, it was more of like crowdsourcing uh, talent through our existing staff members. And what I mean by that is, you know, not only did we develop the social assets, the, the landing pages, do the sponsored campaigns and so forth, but what we did was created playbooks mm -hmm. for uh, all of the, um, you know, the, the information systems teams mm -hmm. uh to sh to share these to share this content to add it to their email signatures to put it out through linkedin and mm -hmm. the how to's for people who may not have been social savvy mm -hmm. to, to to give them a, a really good uh jumping off point mm -hmm. uh to getting off the sidelines and becoming active and helping us attract talent <clears throat> and so you know when you realize that um you know this is a a nod to my friends over at linkedin uh, when you realize that your staff base has far greater reach than your company does just by virtue of exponential network uh, uh, numbers, then I think your job as an employer brand or recruitment marketer is to tap into your staff's networks because that's where the critical or missing piece of the puzzle, as it were, for talent may, may be, may reside. Mm -hmm. And our, our, our teams or our uh, our employees have more credibility with their networks than we do as a company. And so if they are uh, you know, actively sharing this content, if they're passionately expressing the message and why it's important to people who trust them already, mm -hmm. it's far easier to make a good connection and actually pull a quality candidate into the mix um, than it is just, you know, blind sponsored content approaches. So, awesome. so, so we activated the, the employee base Additionally, mm -hmm. not only did we target, you know, uh, for criteria in our in our um, in our sponsored campaigns, uh, you know, criteria for the people who would match or, or you know skill sets and so forth, mm -hmm. um, but we also um, t targeted ads to our employee base, right? Uh, and so, so you know, uh, a shout out to Charlotte Marshall, who's who's a friend and a mentor, mm -hmm. uh, who said, you know, why wouldn't you? you know, mm -hmm. target your employee base with this messaging because when they see it, they're gonna share it as well. Yeah. Proof positive, we've 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 gotten several applicants as a result of this campaign. Mm -hmm. And that can and, and those results came from the employee targeted ads, which is funny enough, right? So it it, it really reinforces the concept that your employee base uh, has credibility and trust in their networks from their networks. This is this is great. Um great uh, experience of, of adding that employee pool to your targeted ads. So thank you for sharing that. That sure. is a great segue to my next question, which is your expertise is employee advocacy. Before I get into that, I wanna give a huge shout out to all the, uh, all the members who logged in and sharing comments right here. Fanny, Adrian, um, Angelina, Alicia, Alexer, um, Richard, um, Monica, thank you all so much for tuning in and sharing your support with us. Um, and John and I are so thankful um, that you guys um, are um, joining with us today. So employee advocacy. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's actually interesting. I mean, the more I know, the more I know your work, I'm so, in, I'm so, what, what would I say? If I were to say intrigued by, that will be less of a word. But um, you, you take that employee advocacy to your heart. And, and um, I've seen that some of the organizations out there were trying to promote, um, I, I mean, yeah, employee adv um, advocacy or employee brand ambassador program. Everything is great. But instead of you guys, 
pushing your employees, okay, please share and reshare. Yeah. Um, you guys are putting it out there on their Facebook page or Twitter or on their social media platform. That's right. We're making them to reshare it. Yep. So tell us, what's the heart of that employee advocacy to you and to your organization? Uh, so advocacy, sorry, it's transition there. I needed power. Oh, okay. uh, advocacy is um, is one of the things that I think is is not only a secret weapon, but also one of your most powerful tools. Mm -hmm. um, it it gives you an opportunity to to activate your employees in a way that doesn't um, that doesn't position them uh, disingenuously in, 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 in the impact out of it. So mm -hmm. there's a there's an approach that. Uh, that some companies take that suggests, okay, if we launch an employee advocacy program, we're going to send our company content through that pipeline for our employees to share out. So that way we get our message out through our employees. I happen to take a different, very different stance on that and suggest that's probably the last thing we should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I think, you know, when you understand that people have become extremely sensitive to to when they're being sold or when they're being marketed to uh, in a way that does not feel authentic or relevant sure. and we've 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 been wired to ignore that right in fact actively reject it mm -hmm. and so with all of the noise coming through our news feeds the last thing that we should be doing is adding more noise to it yeah. so my approach essentially is what how can we curate relevant content that's value add for the employee to share to their network so that that way the employee themselves becomes a hub of value add content mm -hmm. that their network can appreciate benefit from um, and also you know um, keep coming back for more so mm -hmm. our job then becomes to feed the machine of of really good content that can improve somebody professionally personally uh, and so forth and so that's uh, that's pretty much the approach, I think, and, and the results that we've seen from doing that um, historically have been phenomenal. Like, I everything like that from, approach. Yeah. 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 Because the thing is, it, 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 um, if I were to say I, I, have, I have personally you <clears> know, <throat> had conversation with employees wherein you know, they have this notion that Facebook is so private to me and I don't want it to share anything of my employers. Yeah. Um, on my Facebook because it's all about family and friends and but at the same time they are so hardcore employees who will you know uh, who has who has been with the organization for many many years and they live and breathe that mission yeah. of, of, of the organization but when it comes to should I sell it or not that's personal so yeah that's real and, and you have to be conscious of that because this is their space right you as a as an organization have no control over their personal profile so what they choose to share mm -hmm. is 100 percent up to them mm -hmm. and um you know you don't want to turn their networks off right and and, and you know um sort of uh, monopolize that space where it should be used for what people feel is most authentic to them so yeah. Um, tell our audience um, about the employee advocacy strategy. Um, I know you kind of talked about it, but at the same time, my question is towards, do you guys um, do this completely organic manner or do you have any tools? Um, do you have a team to kind of train the, you know, the employee community who can be like an ambassador <clears throat> out there? Um, share a little bit about those work. Yeah. Well, let's just say that there's a host of tools that you could use for advocacy. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and for people who are trying to start it up and you know in their in their organizations manually and you know tracking via spreadsheet, mm -hmm. uh, much like I did at first, mm -hmm. I will say find a tool because a lot of that work is made simple. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for you. Um, I, I I how do I say this? without endorsing any one tool because one tool might fit better for, for, for different organizations and what their needs are. But I will say that 
there was a um, an, a, a viewer actually, somebody who's joined us in the audience who works for a company who has a tool that I very much favor. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so so shouts to Monique White. Uh, okay. She was she was there as well. So I'll, I'll let I'll let the audience do some sleuthing and see if Monique's inbox blows up. But um, elevate. Oh well, you know you said it, not me. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So I would say uh, for me, it's um, it's it's really about how can you curate great content and then measure results, not just from when content goes out, but all the way through to the impact on uh, hires. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I found that you know one tool versus several others in the marketplace did that better than anybody out. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, so for me, it's, uh, it's really about, like I said, it's not just the content flow and getting people active. It's what is the measurable result, uh, you know, towards recruitment. Yeah. And I guess that's where as a talent acquisition professional or as an employer branding prof professionals should need to improve, right? I mean, we do all the work, we do um, several initiatives and campaigns. And after all, trying to understand, you know, what response that we are receiving and where do we do great and where do we lack and how do we improve? So we need to know that kind of the metrics. Um, well, talking about metrics, being you know a global employer branding leader and recruitment marketing leader, um, you know, <clears throat> tell our audience um, what are some of the metrics that matter the most. Mm, yeah, so you know it, it's going to differ depending on who you talk to, but I think as a standard, if it's anything recruitment marketing or socially, you're going to look at your standard mm -hmm. uh, engagement metrics. Uh, you know audience size impressions reach uh you know your 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 reactions likes clicks comments shares um and that that'll give you some a, a gauge on how uh, effectively your content is connecting with audiences mm -hmm. not just in are they seeing it but are they doing something with it once it comes across their their feeds true um but then you know i think there's also a lot of different approaches right now and and, and the beauty of this field is that it's ever evolving. Mm -hmm. And I think the holy grail that we as recruitment marketers look for is to be able to measure from first interaction all the way to either apply or to hire. Right? Sure. And for me, I stop at the application, uh, right? Because mm -hmm. my job essentially is to get people to the party, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once, they, once they click apply, they are now in the party. <clears throat> and that relationship between recruiter and hiring manager and, and uh, you know, and everybody else they will interact with as a result of it, that is where, you know, that relationship is solidified, right? So, sure. so I get people to the first date. Once, once, they're, once they're past the first date, it's up to them to get married. Right? I like that analogy. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so that's the matchmaking element. So for me, I, I look at, you know, everything from cost of, cost of, cost of applicant Mm -hmm. How much did we have to spend to get somebody to apply? Mm -hmm. Looking at how many, how many applications on average does it take to fill a role or, mm -hmm. or to, to get to to that uh, to get to the interview stage? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole host of metrics you can look at there, uh, and a whole host of tools you can use to um, to, to to manage or, or measure those things. Mm -hmm. The hard part is is there's no singular option yet yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now mark my words. Uh, on on August twenty eighth, <laughs> I said that it didn't exist. Well, that could change, you know, quite frankly, tomorrow or next week. But mm -hmm. um, you know, that would be the ultimate goal, right? Is to understand from first exposure all the way to hire or to interview. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm really glad to hear that. You know, the uh, focusing more on the cost of applicants and the average number of applicants to fill a position. Um, so that gives, you know, that that's totally different than what's been the norm out there uh, where, you know, the um, traditional talent acquisition professional would say time to fill is the number one factor, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what about that retention and what are we doing to, you know, you talked about that war for talent, right? So it's not mm. about the war for talent anymore or it's not just about people to subscribe or people to, you know, click. Yeah. And it, it's all about, you know, how can you have somebody to stay with you? 
to yeah. retain them or, or for example or for not you know not scroll and go out from your window right so tell our audience in terms of what it takes to that retention from a candidate experience point of view because we all mm -hmm. are into that war for talent into that you know bringing in more applicants and then mm -hmm. you know uh, promoting it out there but when yeah. it comes to it as you said people join to your party now how can we make them dance that's right that's right good music keeps people dancing okay uh, and, and and what that uh what that really equates to is a couple of things one i think not only are we in a war for talent it's a war for attention right mm -hmm. so they have to first be aware of you to then even consider you as an employer um so so a lot of your job should be to um you know a lot of our role is to keep our awareness high right mm -hmm. like putting out content that's relevant that's value add mm -hmm. uh, and that connects once um you know and then you also have to be very conscious that you are selling a reality, not not a fluffy, feel good, yeah. uh, bait and switch. All right. So so when you talk about retention, it's how how accurately are you reflecting internal cultures of that? When somebody says sees your content, takes an action and clicks apply, gets hired. Mm -hmm. starts on day one and in their first 30, 60, 90 days, everything you sold wasn't accurate. <laughs> oh my and God. then they drop out of the bucket, right? And that's where you get attrition. And, and you know, every every company can look at their, you know, their attrition rates within first year. And I think that's a really good measure to look at uh, either benchmarking and saying, can, can you make an impact long term through, you know, effective recruitment marketing or effective employer branding? Sure. Um, to make sure that the experience that you sell is the experience that somebody actually has, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, a, another shout out to to a friend and mentor in, in this in this space, Brian Adams over at PH Creative. Mm -hmm. Loved his talk. I love his talk about, you know, the harsh realities, you know, yeah. getting away from the fluff and employer brand and really, really talking about what is the harsh reality of where you work but mm -hmm. what is the benefit that somebody will uh, garner as a result of dealing with that harsh reality, putting themselves all in emotionally, professionally, you know, uh, you know, and so forth, and then drawing forth growth, uh, you know, value, light, value at life lessons, lifelong relationships and partnerships and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. If you can't do those two things, then, then your brand doesn't differentiate itself. And in fact, you're selling fluff and dreams. True, true. That's the core, like um, differentiate 100%. yourself, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, while you talk about that fluff versus being so real, um, you know, I guess that's where some of uh, some of us out there, uh, in terms of you know working with a wrong mentor or working with a with an agency who um, who can make this happen, but at the same time, is it real? Is it really the effort and in, in day-to-day life of an employee and how they feel about working with you as an organization? So thank you so much for bringing the differenti differentiating factor. Yeah. So we are about you know uh, 45 minutes in and we still have audience mm -hmm. coming in, which is so great. That's and awesome. thank you so much for being out there. Yeah. Um, so tell our audience in terms of, you know, um, you know, I want to touch a subject which is all about personal brand because you talked about that differentiation, right? Yeah. So how we as a as a person, um, you know, try to try to bring in that personal brand and then be yourself. I mean, you don't have to please everybody. You don't have to make friends with everybody out there. But at the same time, being real as who you are and mm. making. Um, that is a that is a connecting factor with your audience mm -hmm. or with your with your network. Tell um, our our audience in terms of what's your perspective, yeah. your um, uh, advice to, to our audience in terms <clears throat> of um, being that's being a, real. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. So I do a lot of talks at conferences and other companies around personal brand and, mm -hmm. and how, you know, the power of personal brand, especially as it relates to LinkedIn, funny enough. Um, and so the, one of the, one of the things that I promise is sort of this transformative moment within my talk where you, where you come out of it 
thinking very much more introspectively about who you are and answering that question. And so when I when I I challenge people with that question of who are you, but I also put uh, some constraints around and I say, you know, when you answer that question, you can't use anything that like an external definer, like, you know, marital status, job title, alma mater, anything like that, right? Parental status, but dig down and drill down to your core. Who are you like inherently? What are those things that people come to you for constantly that, you know, you, that's your calling card. People know if they need X, they can reach out to Nisha and and, and this is what you do so effortlessly, but so effectively without any thought. When you can get to that level of who you are at your core, uh, then you can then then you have a fighting chance at articulating that value to other people. And then you know who your audience is, where they where they are, and where you should be mm -hmm. to to um, to exchange that value. And so, uh, I'd say that's what probably the one of the most important elements of building your personal brand. And then it's you know consistency and and um, you know making sure that you're seeking to deliver value before you extract it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is a huge thing for me because I think uh, the the value of a relationship uh, is solely dependent on the equity and exchange of value. True. So if it's imbalance, right? If one person's taking more and making more withdrawals mm -hmm. than making deposits, yeah. Then that then there's a there's there's a disharmony there. So I think your brand should be consciously you should be consciously monitoring and managing your brand to say and do a check in right. Who am I delivering value to? Mm -hmm. Who's delivering value to me? And does that do those brand alignments make sense? You know. Well, thank you for sharing that uh, profound statement out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, we got Tony Robbins real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but I cannot, you know, I, I really wanted to capture that from you um, and to share it with our audience. But thank you so much for sharing that. So before we wrap it up, um, you know, I definitely wanted to ask this question because we, um, um, you know, we're, we, we are in a part of, of, of a community where we have um, a lot of employer branding and recruitment marketing professionals and you are one of the leaders out there. So I'm pretty sure there are many um, younger generation or um, budding professionals like me, definitely. Mm, yeah. um, what's your best advice uh, to all those budding professionals in the employer branding or recruitment marketing industry? Uh, I've, I've gotten that question a lot recently with the last intern class, funny enough, but um. <clears throat> You know, I, I'd say first and foremost, there are no linear paths to success. Um, you know, starting with a desire to connect people, uh, connect aspiration to opportunity. Starting there, I think you can be a that is that is a good starting point to then jump into the space. Um, but you know, you have to be able to build relationships at all levels and functions. Um, you have to be a connector, uh, right? And, and understanding where the value in relationships uh, lies. And then you also have to be very good at getting to business demand or business need mm -hmm. and, and figuring out quickly, effectively, and cost, um, you know, cost effectively how to solve those challenges or help solve those challenges. Um, so yeah, I, I would say, you know, if social is a platform that you understand uh, and you know how to bring brands to target audiences, then yeah, then I think you have a fighting shot. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm pretty sure, you know, people um, listen to your uh, thoughtful comments and advice right there. And, and I personally are going to um, use it in every single day for sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, John, thank you so much for doing this with me early morning, 5.30, first thing in the morning. And I know that you are a busy um, person, busy schedule, and you get to work and all that good stuff. But uh, I really, really appreciate you being here and sharing the entire journey of, uh, of you and how you transition to you know, who you are as a person right now. Wow. Thank you so much, Nisha. Yeah, this is a great way to start the day, by the way. So uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, thank you for having me. Great audience. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're one of the early, uh, early adopters of LinkedIn Live. So uh, keep fighting the good fight and leading the charge there. Thank you so much. Yeah, I will. I think I can 
you know, I will uh, live up to it. And thank you so much. I will, I will try to do my best. And uh, yeah. to all of the audience who joined with us, thank you. Thank you so much for your comments, likes, shares. And we really appreciate it right from our heart. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without your help. And John, uh, we will have you come over again sometime soon. So you have a wonderful day ahead today. You too. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks. Bye-bye.